Coming up, all this cleaning's got me hungry. Reese's, Twix, Snickers. Are you ready to take your cleaning to a whole new level with tips and tricks that actually work? And this also works great. Well, that's what we're gonna do. And after this video, you are gonna be super motivated to do something around your house. I mean, we're talking oven racks, stainless steel, laundry stripping, let's do it. What's one of the biggest pain points when it comes to your kitchen? It's the oven and the oven racks. Now, I recently watched a video where a cleaning expert said, get a big, large, like basin of some sort and then you soak these in there first of all i don't know about you don't i don't have like a large bin or basin laying around to soak these in the second option is that you could put these in your bathtub that works however here's the problem then you got to clean your bathtub then you're slunched over your bathtub like this trying to scrub your oven racks so i have an easier solution for you of course come on in here to these oven racks let's take a little Look, see, see what we're working with. These aren't too bad, but yes, this, this is a little bit sticky. We got some pizza cheese. We got some, who knows what? Let's look at our second oven rack in here, shall we? All right, there are just four things that you are gonna need when it comes to cleaning your oven racks. Number one, you need a really good degreaser. Number two, you need time. We gotta be patient when it comes to getting grease off these things. Number three, you need a really good sponge, like a really heavy duty one. And number four, well, a little elbow grease will help. And well, number five, you might want a pair of gloves to help you out. You're just gonna get some Dawn Power Wash or whatever degreaser that you like. You can have a large sink. You can have a small sink. So I'm gonna just use my sink in this direction in the event that you have a smaller size sink. The key here is to soak these babies in this power wash. Well. I'm gonna suck my countertop too. Nothing in this video is sponsored, by the way. Anything I talk about will be linked in that description box below. We're gonna soak these. We're gonna let these sit. We're gonna come back to these in like an hour or so, and you will see how well this comes off. No need to dirty up your bathtub. No need to get a large bin and try to find one of those just to clean these oven racks. Oh, this smells so lovely. Ooh, this is the fresh clean scent. The lemon one is really good, but really we want to saturate these. If your oven racks are so bad, you're going to want to let these sit overnight and maybe come back and spray a little bit more. I'm excited. Let's move on to the second hack. And in fact, we're going to time this. It's currently 11.25 a.m. Let's head on up to my laundry room. Do you ever struggle with stinky towels, maybe workout gear? You go online, you type into Google how to get the stink out of my towels. And different search results will come up that will tell you to strip your laundry. You're like, what the heck? What is laundry stripping? In fact, I made an entire parody about laundry stripping and why you should not do it. So here's the essence of laundry stripping. You basically get like 50 ingredients. Just kidding, it's like three. You get borax, you get some washing soda, you get some laundry detergent. You put all your stuff in a bathtub. Yep, you load up your bathtub with all the things that have a little bit of a stink. You fill this up, you soak it, and then you stir it. You come back every couple hours and stir your laundry. And then you just let it sit overnight and then you come back and you stir it again. And then what do you do? You gotta wring all that wet stuff out and then you end up washing it again. People make videos related to this, but I swear they just dump like a bunch of dirt in there to make it look like they've done something. Who wants to do this? Like spend an entire day stirring your dirty laundry. I got a solution for you. It's like lickety split, cost effective as well. Because once you've bought the borax, the washing, soda, the laundry detergent, and you've spent 12 hours stripping your laundry, well, you might as well have just got this next thing. I ran down my kitchen really quick just to grab something. Look at these racks. It's been just 10 minutes. Can you see the grease just coming off, like oozing off on its own accord? I know that gets me excited. Let's just whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, baby. Stay tuned on that. Whew, I get a lot of exercise running up and down those stairs during the day. Okay, whites, first and foremost, this is what you want to do. We're talking about laundry stripping, remember? Okay, always pre-treat a stain. Like right when you notice it, especially kitchen towels, pre-treat it, let it sit for a couple days. I like Shout, there are so many other amazing ones out there. Okay, take your laundry, your towels, your workout gear, your gym gear, whatever it is that someone told you to strip your laundry and you're gonna do this instead. Guys, if you're new here, I have four kids. 
they're in hockey, they're in dance. I myself run a fitness YouTube channel. I say that to say there's a lot of sweat happening in my house. So if I'm not laundry stripping, I don't know who is. Okay, that's the best thing I can say about that. You don't need to do it. So we're gonna shut this. And you can either do a quick wash or a normal wash. I think I'm just gonna do a quick wash on this one. It's 26 minutes. I like to do hot heat. If you have some really soiled stuff, do a full normal wash, which is about 56 minutes or so. And then there's a couple things that you're gonna use. I've shown this um, in the downy version. This is the Tide version. This is three times odor power, cleans deep breaks down residues and freshens fabric. You can even get ones that are non-scented, that are hypoallergenic. The main ingredient in this is the citric acid. That's why it works so wonderful. I just put that in the fabric softener dispenser. We're gonna talk about vinegar because I know many of you are gonna be in that comments box talking to me about vinegar. We'll get to that, don't you worry. A little laundry detergent in here, that was probably way more than I needed. And because these are whites, I like to bleach them. If I'm not bleaching them, then I'm just gonna use some OxyClean White Revive. We're gonna put this in here, start this, and dry them as normal. I've never had a stinky smell. I've never had a stinky towel. I've never had stinky workout gear using this method right here. Again, not sponsored, it's just a great product. What is one of the most used items in your home? And this is excluding electronics. Your couches! I have four kids and yes, I do have white furniture. When is the last time you really did a good deep cleaning of your furniture? I like to do it every three months and let me show you why. You are gonna be appalled, but it's gonna be so satisfying all at the same time. And if you're ever feeling anxious or upset, what I'm about to show you is gonna relieve some of that. It's so good. But check out these couches. They are white, they are bright, but but you're gonna be surprised here very shortly. We tend not to eat on the couches, although I do like to eat some popcorn in the evening on them and maybe chocolate here from time to time. This is a must have in your cleaning arsenal. OxyClean is fantastic for so many purposes, especially this one, come on in here. You gotta like, ah! Oh! It smells good, but it's not overpowering. Yes, take a whiff, smell a vision at its finest. It also removes stains. Over a hundred and hundred and one ways to use this. So this is what we're gonna do. Wanna get it nice and warm. Oh, it smells so good. Fresh. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, it's Andrew Jean Cleaning. Almost daily, I post daily deals, and this has been on sale quite a lot recently, so make sure you head on over there. Uh, it's on Instagram stories is where I post those. Sometimes I'll do the community tab here on YouTube, but more often than not, I'm just gonna post it on Instagram stories. So if you're looking for any of these cleaning supplies that are on sale or you're looking for a deal, then I wanna help you out because it's important to have good cleaning supplies because it makes your job easier and it makes cleaning more fun and effective all at the same time and they're great investments I remember as a kid I was like parents who get vacuums and cleaning supplies like how lame but now that I'm adult I'm thinking this is like the coolest thing ever I love the sound of that it's like a kitten purring I just did this first cushion right here. I'm gonna show you, it looks nasty. By the way, if you ever wonder if your house has a smell to it, oftentimes it's because of fabric furniture like this. This fabric likes to house a lot of different smells, especially if you're cooking, especially if you have pets, especially if especially, especially all the different things. But just this one cushion, mind you, smoking, yeah, my cameraman saying smoking, especially do this every three months, I would do this. I know it kind of takes a bit of a time, but you're gonna want, it's gonna make the difference. Look that yellow water just this one cushion and I did this uh, around Christmas time actually in January I just did this that's nasty can you imagine if you haven't done this for like a year what your furniture is housing but not anymore you have the perfect simple solution we got to do a satisfying dump we got to see the, the fruits of our labor also if you're wondering why I'm wearing heels I filmed something for Amazon also these don't actually feel like high heels they feel kind of like slippers if you're wondering I know I'm gonna get a comment like that but here we go Ooh, 
stainless steel. It's a love-hate relationship. You can see everything that's on that refrigerator, but when it's clean, it looks so nice and shiny. There's so many ways on the internet telling you how to do this. I'm going to share with you my best way. This little cloth right here, I believe it's called, yep, it's a nano towel, no chemicals involved. We're just gonna grab some water over here. But actually, let's take a sneak peek. Can you see all the sticky stuff? Look at all these spots. I mean, this is on the daily. We got a lot of fingers grabbing in here, down around here. Yes, ooh, right along the side. Come on over here. Cute little fingers. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit of warm water. You don't need a ton of water. and Our racks are still here, happy. Don't worry, we haven't neglected them. There we go, a little bit of water. This is great, I just keep it underneath my kitchen sink and you're gonna go in. If you try to go in with a stainless steel cleaner to clean all of these sticky marks, they're not gonna come off very well. This is a two-step process. Why do I know that? <sighs> a lot of trial and error. So right now I'm just going in and removing all of these sticky fingerprints that I see. No chemicals involved, which is fantastic. You'll also notice on my refrigerator, I have like nothing on it. And if I do have something on it, it's usually just a piece of paper, a laundry detergent sign, and that's about it. If you want your kitchen to automatically look cleaner, bigger, and more organized, get all the junk off your refrigerator. It makes such a difference. If you've ever been to the parade of homes or you're looking at a new house, do they have their refrigerator cluttered with all kinds of stuff? No, they don't. There's a reason for that. Okay, so then you're gonna take the other side of your towel, which is a little bit drier, and just dry it off. This is why you want to use a little less water. Look at all of those fingerprints just come off so nicely with this towel. And then you're going to wash this towel just like you would any sort of microfiber towel, avoiding fabric softener. I wash on just some warm water and I dry on a medium heat. Now to see the effects of your work when it comes to stainless steel, you wanna make sure that you let it fully dry. Yes, people will tell you all the DIY stuff, the vinegar, the baby oil, the, I don't know, rubbing alcohol. Um, I don't know, just different concoctions of things, but this works the best in my opinion. Okay, now that we got all the dirt off, this is what we're gonna do next. I like this one, it's for stainless steel, it's made in the USA, it's Sheila Shine. I also like the Sprayway Cleaner. You on a microfiber towel a little goes a long way with this you want to make sure not to get it on your floor as well because it's slippery this stuff is slippery but this is really going to give it that beautiful shine again let that fully dry look at this refrigerator so shiny now i don't do this every time i clean because it does take a bit more time but it looks so gorgeous and beautiful and almost like new this refrigerator i don't know what do you think about 15 years old something like that original to the house uh, so there are a few scratches but overall she's looking so pretty all this cleaning's got me hungry give me a break give me a break break me off a piece of that kit kat bar i can't open it let me know in that comments box below what your favorite candy bar is. I don't know, it's a toss up for me between Kit Kat, Reese's, Twix, Snickers. I don't know, they're all good. Luckily I didn't get any chocolate in my pants this time. Okay, we're checking these. Remember these? We're gonna take a smell. You wanna take a smell? Come on in here, smell these towels. They just smell lovely. They don't smell stinky. I know, I know. Go ahead and dry these. And this will actually lead very nicely into the next one is vinegar when it comes to your towels. I know this is gonna upset a lot of people, but it's my honest truth. People will tell you to put vinegar with your towels, either in the drum or your fabric softener. Smell it. This is what your towels will smell like in your workout wear if you're using this as a fabric softener or as a rinse agent that I just showed you. Like I've done this so many times and it just does not smell good. You may think it smells fine, but I guarantee if you did a smell test with somebody else, they're gonna tell you that something like this smells a lot nicer and fresher than this just smells like stale, wet, damp when you use this with your towels. And honestly, I don't think it really fluffens, makes your towels more fluffy as people tell you that it does. This is something else I like to do every three months. We're here in my boys' room. It's washing your pillows. Yes, you can absolutely wash your pillows in the washing machine. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Also, if you have a pillow that's kind of flat, you can just put it in the dryer for a few minutes to fluff it up. I don't know, it just works its magic with the heat in there. So let's go 
ahead and clean these pillows up. Come with me. So Andrew Jean, how do you wash the pillows without damage? One, you should probably read the product care instructions, but I will tell you this. It's confusing from pillow to pillow, even though the stuffing inside the pillow is the same. So this is what I do. You're gonna do two pillows, depending if you have a front loader or a top loader, just two pillows. If you try to put something else in there with the pillows, it's gonna make the pillows look really misshapen and it's just not gonna be good overall. Again, quick wash. This time I'm gonna do warm water. I do like to use a little de laundry detergent. You just need a little bit, a little bit of boop, boop, just like that. And I also like to use some of this. This is fantastic, especially if you're drooling or you know, you're sweating on your pillow, or you're, you're soaking through your pillow, whatever. I know, I like to drool when I sleep. I also like to use a laundry sanitizer from time to time, especially if it's like a new clothing product that I bought for pillows for, I don't know, you name it. There's so many different products like this that you can buy, but it just makes me feel better. Let's wash these babies up and then we are gonna dry them in the dryer. We are number seven. We're almost at the halfway point. I'm starting to get sad. This next one is going to take your cleaning game to a whole new level. If you feel like a hot mess inside, well, if you do this, the rest of your external world is gonna be like just a little bit better. Also, I wanna show you on these pillows here, what is consistent amongst pillows is they do not want you to use bleach. So avoid bleach when it comes to washing your pillows. But let me just show you, I got these new covers a little before and you can see they're wrinkly, they don't look that hot. We're gonna whip this into shape. You can do this with bedspreads. You could do this with shower curtains. It just adds that little extra touch. And also, I don't know about you, it just feels super like therapeutic to do it. Let's just do it. This is also excellent on curtains. Okay, distilled water if you have it. If you don't, that is just fine too. Let it brew. She's ready, waiting. The anticipation is the hardest part. See all these wrinkles right here? Now, are you gonna do this every week? No, just when you get a new piece of some sort or uh, this is hot, so be careful. If you get a new piece, maybe you wash something and it didn't come out of the dryer or washer as wrinkle-free as you would like. This is just gonna really elevate things and make things look more put together. It's kind of like if you're dressing up and you have a wrinkly shirt and you're kind of like, well, you missed a step there. You just, just get those wrinkles out. It'll look so much better. It'll really look nice and put together. Well, that's what I assimilate steaming. Like this is probably one of my most beloved items, the steamer. And it's relaxing, very satisfying, kind of soothing, purrs at you. Now these are some deep wrinkles that came in my Amazon box. I often will use a fabric sanitizer as well. It's just a spray for something like this. This I don't necessarily want to run through the wash. I mean, I certainly could, but not yet. I'm not ready for that. I hope the camera can pick up the differentiation here. This is the pillowcase that we steamed. Looks really nice, put together. And then this one, we did not steam. There's all these lines and wrinkles in here. It just really looks like I pulled it out of a box and, and put a pillow on it. The first time you steam it and get those deep wrinkles out, it's gonna look better overall than if you had not done it at all. But it just makes such a difference. You go from like A plus to like a, a B minus, pull it out of the box sort of situation. What do you do if you have tall windows or tall mirrors? One, you just leave it and watch the dust accumulate and whatever else tends to stick to it. Or two, you just get really annoyed by the situation or maybe you try to get on a ladder and then you're like, I don't want to get a ladder. I don't have to clean the windows. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to grab your Swiffer. This is just an e-cloth. This is specific for cleaning windows. This is fantastic because all you need is this cloth and some water. If you have distilled water, I would use it. If not, that's fine too. You can spray directly on here. You could also spray directly on your window or your mirror. So let me show you a couple places that we are gonna use this. Follow me. This is pretty high to clean, and as a result, it does not get cleaned very often because I can't reach it. But now I got myself covered. You can also use this on the outside of your windows. Oh yeah, look at all that square footage that I am covering in here. Ooh, yes, we get this one. Again, if you have a tall mirror in your bathroom, this is a fantastic way to do it rather than having to climb on your countertop or get a ladder out or something along those lines. Number 10, if you don't do this to your floors, you're gonna want to, and I'm gonna show you exactly why. I do this every week. I should probably do it more often. You're gonna get yourself a Swiffer and a cloth like this. Many of you ask me, Andrea Jean, why do you no longer like the Tinco? If you have no interest in hearing my 
response, just fast forward to this part, although you're gonna wanna see why you're gonna need this for your floors. You don't wanna just sweep your floors. You don't wanna just vacuum your floors like, <sighs> You'll see it's disgusting but satisfying all at the same time. Okay, my deal with the Tinco. A big influencer raved about the Tinco. She has millions of followers. I'm like, this has gotta be a great product. It vacuums, it mops at the same time. It can suck up dry stuff. It can suck up liquids. I was all about it and I got it for several months. In fact, I did a whole giveaway in the Tinco because I loved it that much. But however, after a couple months of using it, I really started to realize the disadvantages of the Tinco. One, it's expensive. Expensive. Two, it has a self-cleaning option on it. However, you still have to manually clean it. Otherwise, it will start to smell because it harbors all the water and the little spinner brush rotation that does the mopping of your floor. You have to physically take that brush off. You have to hand wash it, scrub it out really well, and then you have to let it dry. And it takes over a day to dry. So not only do you have the water reservoir, you have the little spinny brush. There's another compartment to it. You have those all laying around drying in your kitchen, your bathroom, or somewhere. And I didn't do this every time. I used it, however, if you don't do it frequently enough, you're gonna really notice a smell with the Tinco. Yes, I love the option of it being able to vacuum your floors and mop all at the same time, but actually cleaning the Tinco product because a self-cleaning option is not enough to clean it is a pain in the butt. So I am just ride or die back to the basics with a good old spin mop. Why a spin mop? Because you can easily throw the mop head in your washing machine and your dryer. You can also soak them. I like to soak them in a little OxyClean White Revive. You have no smells. There's no having to let things sit out and air dry. There's no having to hand wash things like with the Tinco. So if you've been contemplating whether you should get the Tinco or not, because I know many of you have asked me that, I would advise against it. And I know this is contrary to popular belief because you'll see it on YouTube YouTube, you'll see it on TikTok, you'll see it on Instagram, people raving about the tin coat. But the reality of it after a few months of using it, it is a pain to clean, like literally a pain in the butt and time consuming. Okay, back to our regular scheduled program. You're gonna wanna do this whenever you clean your floors. Why? Watch this. Oh, I should show you, look at, look at how white and bright this is. Yeah, baby. And these are brand new shoes. I have not yet worn these outside. So typically we don't wear shoes in the house. I'm just trying to break them in, you know? You may be asking yourself, Andrew Jean, how often do you vacuum? We vacuum the kitchen and entryway and this sort of area every single day with four kids and crumbs and neighbor kids and food. And then we mop once a week. Now, truth be told, we should probably mop more than once a week based on my son's socks. However, like I don't have time for that. Once a week is like enough in my book. I also do not clean all day long. I just do not have time. So I need to find the best strategies to get the job done quickly and effectively. That's the key. Another person once said to me, Andrew Jean, don't you move all your rugs when you are mopping and cleaning under your floors? No, ma'am. I am not moving all of my area rugs. You think I'm going to move my kitchen table, this whole dining room, and then move the rug out of the way to clean it? No, it's hidden. It's hidden. Maybe once every couple of years, we'll, you know, we'll get in there, we'll clean out underneath there. It's kind of like your couches. I don't move my couches and clean underneath them very often. It's hidden. That's not something I want to do on a Saturday or Sunday. I want to hang out with my kids, go to their sporting events and do that sort of thing. Could I hire somebody to clean under my couches? Yeah, probably, but really, I just don't want to spend the money because it's just not important enough to me. So that's the beauty of cleaning. Pick and choose what's important to you and good enough is good enough. You are going to be appalled by this and you're gonna be saying to yourself why have I not been doing that this gets all of the dust lint grime that your vacuum does not clean up or that you know maybe a mop wouldn't get very well I'm excited to see what's underneath here I'm missing spots that's just fine you get the idea quickly in here okay moment of truth <laughs> look at this look at all of this dirt and grime on your floor, yes. So if you really want clean floors, I would make sure that you Swiffer them before you mop them. What's the quickest and fastest way to clean a wall from grease marks, from crayon marks, from anything, especially flat paint? It's this Mean Green and just like a microfiber towel. Spray that directly on there. We have flat paint, I absolutely hate it. It looks pretty, but it just is not practical if you have little, little ones running around that like to touch everything and put their cars. So we had a handprint right there and it's gonna come right off. Do you see this right here? I have no idea, like what the heck is this? It looks like blueberries, raspberries or something. 
Just take your mean green. This is a great spot trait. So sticky. Like how did this even get here? Honestly, this whole house needs a fresh coat of paint. Okay, anyway, there's more in here. Now that I get down here and I'm seeing it more, I'm just like, gosh, they're really bad. Okay, come over here. Here's another problem area because the kids go down the stairs and this is what they touch. There's like all this purple stuff here. There isn't really a uh, scent to this mean green, which is fantastic. Just, I don't know, neutral sort of mild smell but amazing for like quick jobs and this also works great like on laundry stains believe it or not you gotta let me know in that comments box below if this is also a pet peeve of yours you vacuum yet when you're going around the corners sometimes your vacuum can't get in those corners and get all the crumbs along the line i'll show you exactly what i mean so one of the i mean i'm obsessed with mini vacuums because you can just grab and go i use these to vacuum the inside of my car this is recently on sale i put it on instagram stories but let me show you what i mean like okay right in this corner we'll vacuum it but you can't get deep in there because of the shape of the vacuum and it just doesn't get deep in there. And I have a really good vacuum. Look at that, gone. It's over here. Woo-wee. Okay, right here by the refrigerator. See these crumbs? Vacuum can't get in there. Right in here. I love this thing. This really takes your cleaning to a whole new level and you can use this inside of drawers. I've used this inside of my refrigerator, inside of my freezer, uh, basically anywhere where you wanna pick up little little bits of things. Andrew Jean, is it better to dry dust or wet dust? Well, that depends on the situation. Dry dusting is much faster and it you just it's way easier just to go in there and do this. Wet dusting does do a better job. However, there's a caveat to this and let me show you what I mean. If you're trying to wet dust something particularly, I don't know, let's say a set of blinds, come in front here. If you try to wet dust, what it often does is just push around all of the dust and then just makes it really sticky kind of like if you try to clean the top of your toilet tank but there's a lot of dust on it you're just kind of smearing all that dust around so I do like a good wet dust from time to time however if you have a lot of caked on dust and it's gonna it's been a while you're gonna want to go in with a dry duster and then if you want to go in just for a little extra pizzazz a little extra just knowing you did an amazing job then use a wet duster now the beauty if you do go in with sort of a wet dusting spray such as this one is it does really shine things up nicely and this one just has a nice scent to it it just gives it that little extra added elevation it is a little bit more time consuming but again if you don't have layers of dust on a surface I like this option as well sometimes you just need the right tools when it comes to cleaning this is amazing it's got a flat side it's got more of a rounded side this is great for also removing stickers but i'm going to show you two ways i like to use this tool so come on in around here these handles for example there's these tight grooves inside them like you'll see stick this in here and it just gets everything up just like that no chemicals just a good little scraper in here if you're doing your spring cleaning and you just oh look at like i just popped something off there oh i can hear that one see it's flaking off like dandruff can you see this I know I mean now we're really getting in there when it comes to cleaning but if you just want to take it to that little extra step this is great this is fantastic if you've ever had something in your home and it just requires a little tool like this this is perfect three came in a pack it's also dishwasher safe which I love even more okay so we did the handles where's another place that you could use this backsplash there's all of these little grooves inside here and sometimes grease will get stuck in here and you can't quite get it out and you just need a little tool to get it in there you could use this end just depending upon maybe you have some areas around your stove top like right here I'm already seeing some grease that I forgot to get something look at boop 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 did you just see that came right off you need this everybody needs this in your cleaning arsenal it's gonna come in handy in so many different ways that you didn't even know existed let me give you one last example removing these light switch covers is a pain in the butt it's time consuming but can you see this like yellow build up here it's pretty nasty Ugh, i don't even want to know what that is much better i think our racks are ready at least they need to be ready it is 122 just to give you an idea i have two sponges here i have the scrub daddy just you know because this works great make sure you get it wet i also have this amazing wire brush scrubber that fits perfectly there are two sides to it as well this is a little flat side so you can really get some food off but i'm just going to try to go in with this first oh that just melting off Look at that. Ooh, this 
side's bad. Look at that. But the Mac Daddy or Mac Mama of them all is this Steel Wool Quad Zero. You can also use this on glass. You do want to get it wet though when you use it. It's so fun. It works so well. If anyone tells you there's going to be no elbow grease at all involved in cleaning your oven racks, A, your oven racks really weren't that dirty. Um, or B, they're not telling you the whole truth. Look at that. This comes right off. See? Watch. Boop, 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 boop. Did you see all that black on there? The longer you let the Dawn Power Wash sit, the easier this will be. Look at all this. That one's stuck on there. Woo-wee. Oh, it's so satisfying. Just look at that grease just melt off. I love this. Look at these spots. I mean, you could get really crazy in here. Whew, I love this. You see it? Is it coming off? You see that? Yeah, baby. Again, you can also use this on your oven glass store. I've shown that in previous videos as well. Easy peasy. No need to dirty your entire bathtub and buy ammonias and no need to buy a big bin to let this soak in overnight and for hours on end. Degreaser, good sponging tool, and time. I mean, look at that. Almost good as new. It's that time, it's starting to warm up. If you live in other states besides Minnesota where we open our doors and we open our windows and then you look inside and you're like, oh my word, look at all that. I vacuumed it, but it still looks nasty and dirty. Now I certainly can go in with a Bissell steam shot. I've showed that before, but what if you don't have a Bissell steam shot? I'm gonna show you. Get some sort of multi-purpose spray. You could even just use this with water. I just happen to like this one and I like the scent. You're gonna spray it on in there. That's like caked in there. I got a little microfiber towel. I probably should use a paper towel, but that's just fine. And I'm gonna go in with this little electric brush. Again, fantastic for your windows. Woo, it's so satisfying. And you take your towel, paper towel, whatever you're using. Ooh, wee, baby. Look at all of that nastiness. Looking shiny and new. Ooh, this is a job that I don't love doing, but now that I see the results, it just makes me want to keep going. If you find an area with some stuck on stuff that you can't quite lift, you don't have to use an electric cleaning tool such as this. You can just use a regular old cleaning toothbrush, but this is just makes your job so much easier. Nice, white, and bright. I pulled my towels out and they're looking white, bright, they smell delicious. If we can use that in the same sentence, we have our pillows here. You can see still got its shape. Throw that one in here, just like you did your washing machine. Let them dry. You could air dry them if you wanted. I do a normal cycle, medium heat for about 38 minutes. Let me know in that comments box below what you found most helpful in today's video and be sure to share this out with your friends and your family. Those pillows are smelling great and getting nice and fluffy. If you have not, make sure that you click that link in the description box below for your free weekly cleaning and home hack newsletter. It also lets you know when I do really fun giveaways, which by the way, I'm gonna be doing some coming up. And if you wanna see some additional cleaning and home hacks, make sure you click this video on screen now. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you, my friend, in the next one.